Welcome to the Star of Grind. Silicon Valley two years back. Uh, approximately, I think, a few months back, they uh, got they had a long-term partnership tied up with Google. Now they're powered by Google, and uh, their aim is essentially to promote entrepreneurship, uh, foster development, and make it a community. So, in view of that, they try getting and we try getting speakers from various facets of the business world to come and share their experiences, journeys, and all with people like us, upcoming entrepreneurs, so that we can learn from them, get inspired, and aspire to become successful like them. Yeah, so, in a nutshell, that's what it is. Uh, I'm Sriram. Uh, I've already introduced myself, but uh, so I run Smart Advisors apart from this, which is a financial consultancy and a strategy advisory firm. Right? Now, more importantly, this is Boo. Uh, who I think started his uh, entrepreneur career straight out of college, if I'm not wrong. In college. In college. Okay. In college. He started in Pondicherry University and he started various ventures from there. And he's gone from strength to strength. Uh, he co-founded Aspire Systems, which is one of the fastest growing IT companies. Uh, it's a thousand people IT company. But then a few years back, he branched out. He started Aspiration Energy, which is a solar power uh, solutions company. And apart from that, he keeps dabbling in various other ventures. So in his own words, he's not a serial entrepreneur, but he's a parallel entrepreneur. Right, so, thank you for coming on board. And uh, who, let's start off the talk. Uh, I really like to start off with your background in terms of your childhood and where you grew up, how you grew up, what kind of childhood you have when you grew up. Okay. Um, from background perspective, uh, I personally am from, you can call it a lower middle class or uh, lower middle class kind of background. My father was a principal in a government school and uh, we were five children. So, uh, government school you cannot be too corrupt. <laughs> you cannot be corrupt at all. So, he's not, a, he's not earning too much. In Pondicherry, government employee, with five children. So, it's not like a very rich family or anything like that. And uh, so, from that background, the good news was I cannot take any credit for it. Or a gene pool or whatever, all of us studied well. And it's only a, a gene pool, I should say, because I didn't work very really, really hard for studying. I never had to work hard, very notorious, and uh, very meticulous. I had a very uh, a kind of a sad past because the mom passed away when I was three or something like that. And so, had a kind of a, I had a, a stepmom. A little bit of a tumultuous past, I should say. And that uh, led me to be kind of altercating between a very moody kind uh, to a very outgoing thing. So I had to camouflage my moodiness and all of that. I used to be very outgoing and I used to uh, hide myself behind that uh, very bright, natured person kind of a thing. And uh, during college, we are all doing college obviously very short of pocket money. So I was also very short of pocket money. Uh, our first uh, seed funder was my partner's father. He gave us uh, 40 rupees, 20 rupees each. He lent us. With 40 rupees, we, that was the capital that we employed. He put up some notices and uh, started a circulation library way back in college. The lesson from there is that uh, for me, and I think that is very valuable for everyone is that you should start very young. But I really think so. I really think the only advantage that I stand in front of anybody else who is starting an entrepreneurial journey is that at that age, particularly when you're 17, 18, you can do anything. You feel like I felt at least. Now, if you ask me, even now I'm coming back to feeling like that, I come back to what I'm feeling. I used to feel like I can be a hero, I can be an engineer, I can be a doctor, I can be a rat, everything together, parallelly. He says parallel entrepreneurs. So I used to be thinking that, and I can do all of that and still have time to enjoy myself. That's what I used to think. And that's how you feel when you're young. So you're a Mac you can do everything in life. And so that I think is extremely important, that particular thing. And so we became very successful during the college days. We started a circulation library. Hey, you 
uh, another great article that I'm making with the guy just now. He sat at a circulation library. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with circulation library. Basically, magazine timeshare. That's what it is. We used to, Gauri and I used to distribute magazines house after house and then collect them back next day kind of a thing. And we used to make a lot of money. And uh, the numbers will be laughable today, but I, I know it. So you guys can laugh at me. <laughs> and uh, this was, we used to make 700 rupees each. 1400 rupees out of it. Just to give you a perspective of what that number means, our first job, Gauri's first job was at 1100 rupees in HCL. HCL is one of the high payers. I, my first job in last year, Tumbu, was at 3500 rupees a month. That's all my salary was when I joined that last year, Tumbu. So I was making one fifth of that money during, doing two hours of part time work. That's all. So you can understand how much money you are minting. Uh, if you can get the perspective. In today's world, it probably is equal to at least 15,000 rupees a month, I would say. So we were making so much of money that it gave us the confidence that uh, we are like Larson and Kubro, GB International, that's what we formed. So we formed this company called GB International way back in 89, we were in third year in college. We formed this venture called GB International, still existing, it's called GBIL. So Gauri, who international, I think great shakes about that. It. It's all fashioned around last year to so <laughs> that's how we started. But then we did not have the capital to start. Like all the entrepreneurs do, we thought uh, capital is the most important thing and investments is the most important thing and we didn't have the investment. He also belonged to slightly higher middle class, I think big. I think he was, his father was a big salesperson, but he's lost his father during college. So not that he was economically any better than I was. So both of us, uh, all of you know Tamil, yeah. So, and the Tamil, what we had was, Mudiya Katti Malay, Vanda Malay, Pona, whatever. So, I don't know what it was for us. Very good, I don't know what it was So we, but we did not want to do it. And the Tamil thing is very bad. Very good, I don't know what it was for us. So capital learn more than that. And then in 1991, we bought that. I think in 1996, we joined that. You probably do not know this story. So in 1991, we bought that. Saying that we'll come back and rejoin in 96 with 5 lakhs capital each. But 5 lakhs is not the same as economics. We did a meeting in mechanical engineers. And the only thing we call it economics. Economics on the net percent value of it. So we said we made a formula in 91 saying five L N P V J91 J96. This was the magic formula, which means you will come back with five lakhs each, but it will not be five lakhs. It will be five lakh net percent value as on July 91. That's when we passed it. We'll join back in Jan 96. This was what this was our formula. So G V L formula was five L N P V J91 J96. Now, what happened later is a different story altogether. Nobody brought five lakhs. <laughs> so, NPV and non NPV, we didn't think. So, we were thinking we should bring capital, but we did not. But we joined back in 96 and started as well. So, 91 and 96, I used to work for last bit to do. He used to do his M, uh, MS in Texas A&M University. He did a couple of businesses as, after college. He did a couple of jobs. I did one job with last bit to for about three and a half years. But in that three and a half years, they would have founded and killed probably 50, 60 ventures. All small, small ventures. Starting from uh, doing a big stout door to door sales to movies. I don't know how many of you are from villages. In villages, people go with movie theater, movie projector in the schools and show some old cartoon movies and collect one to people and I don't know if you have seen that. Now I have done that business in Maharashtra and villages. So like that I have done at least 50. I and mean, I was distributing Thermax Lamp who we are competing against now. And I was distributing so many things, uh, so many things, all lost making, everything. So whatever Saturday I could lost, draw from last one to draw, I would have lost it, uh, put it into some business. I go and deposit them down here lose that money, experiment with it. It ranged from 
one month, one week to two and a half years. The two and a half years business was a wall manufacturing company. Didn't need us to anywhere. We couldn't, uh, we sold a few walls but lost money there also. So everywhere we lost money. 94 I plunged out of last and to grow. Started a desktop publishing unit. From then on there is at least some coherence to how life happened. Meaning this desktop publishing unit that I started off. Um, again, couple of valuable lessons there. Uh, in the desktop publishing company, what I was trying to do was uh, saying I wanted to replace my salary. So I said I needed some stable income on the sides while I start my exports business. This was my idea, big idea. So I said let's have some stable income on some low risk business. And that was supposed to be a desktop publishing business. How many of you have a desktop publishing? business cards, letterhead design, all of that. So I was running one. So that was supposed to provide me a stable salary while I go around and create an exports business. And uh, GB International was the exports business. Kamban Arts was my DTP business. So I started two ventures together. One was supposed to provide me a stable income. A stable income never came. So 94 to 96 I was chasing that stable income. Never came. Never, never came. So and Two lessons I learned. One, the stable income never came. Number two was, I had an execution person. I had a person who could do that because I cannot do that. The stuff of the design and all that, I cannot. So I employed someone who could do that. The first person was there. But everything is accounting, to collection, to marketing, to sales, everything I was trying to do. And that did not work out. So I had to go out to get some orders, go back and get collections. People, would, uh, people will not pay. So I was making a loss. So 94 to 96 we, I lost also. 96 Gauri joined me back. GB International again from the last prayer systems. 96, the, the only lesson that you can say is out of the, the journey between 94 to 96, one is there is nothing like a stable income that you can keep it on the side and run a business. Every business is a business. If you, have, you have to create a space for yourself and all. Number two is we have to have a team. You cannot do everything by yourself. These are a couple of lessons I learned in 94 to 96. 96 to 2002, we were in total, complete negative spiral. During 96 and 2002. Uh, whatever we touched turned into negative gold. So we, and in 2002, we had a negative uh, one crore loan in today's terms. And uh, for a lower middle class people like us, with the father retiring with a total saving of 5 lakh rupees. You can imagine where it was. It was total chaos. But then, the way we fed, this is, a, this is again a valuable lesson. This is all because of youth. Because of that youth and energy. I don't think I will be in a position to do it now. But you know, starting this entrepreneurial age so late. A um, lot of people do. And then, I don't think I could have prepared myself for it now. Because what we fed, at that time, every time Gauri and I used to get to it and say, Oh my God, if you don't want to do it, you don't want to do it, you don't Now, we used to feel uh, there's a difference between uh, the person who balances on the road, you would have seen, small children and all balance on the road. And Karan and Dafna, if they fall down, they will die actually. They can get very seriously injured. But you have been to a circus. The circus, the same thing is done at a taller uh, rope. In a, the, the rope type is much higher than that. But they will not, if they fall also, they will not die. Because there is a huge safety net. <laughs> same thing is what I, what we felt. He had an MS degree from the US. I had a B, B job. I had worked for three and a half years for last month to grow. A certain amount of reputation was there. Worthwhile or not, is completely different. But a certain amount of reputation was there and is there. So he said, we can always find a job. And maybe you have to repay it over 10 years or start back, one year. But we had to eat. So the valuable lesson there is, one, we were always cognizant of what we are getting into. Cognizant of how much negative we are getting into, or whether we will be able to come out of the hole or not. We never went into a hole. We did, from a classical sin, we went into a hole that is absolutely sinkable hole. But then, from our perspective, it was not a hole that we cannot come out of, number one. But more importantly, age and the safety factors. Those were 
helping us. So a lot of people say that you are risk takers, but in reality, we had such a, at least the perception, maybe that uh, there was a big hole in all that safety net and we would have fallen down, I don't know that, but at least the perception was that we had a safety net. So from that time on, we had been trying. The other thing that we learned in 2002 is focus. We were, uh, in 98, um, Oregonian, it was a, a magazine as part of uh, Oregon State in the United States, uh, featured us, Aspire Systems, as the smallest multinational. They made an article about the smallest multinational. Aspire Systems operates only. We were uh, three full-time employees and we were five countries. So, because, so they were making an article about how internet is enabling this multinationals that are coming from small. Earlier the multinationals were like large companies. So these, these people ran an article called the small multinational and that's, that's how we were very unfocused. We were like, we were running, in 98 if I count, we were running a newspaper in, in the, and we are coming back to the same we focus now. But, so in 98 we were running a small newspaper out of Mumbai. Our desktop publishing business was continuing. We had a 24 by 7 DBA called Aspire DBA we were running. We were uh, distributing simulation products for India. We were running a mall in Bolivia. We were uh, doing a consulting for Citibank in Argentina. We were doing outsourcing for US based projects. We were doing web design for Chennai based companies. Unifly, uh, some of the uh, one law firm, uh, I don't remember, their first website was created by us. Unifly's first website was created by us, just to give you a perspective. Now, so we were running so many businesses. And our, I mean, if we just spell our business starting to say, okay, as far as we their website and all of that, they will be over. Yes, that big focus we had. And later in 2000, we learned that this is not working out. Because you <coughs> money in something, losing money in another. So we decided to focus. In 2000, we decided to focus on the US market, only with outsourcing. And even within outsourcing, we found a niche for yourself called Outsourced Product Development, OBE. 2002, we became profitable with that focus. From 2002 on, we have been uh, growing one of the fastest growing companies in India. Today is one of the great places to work in India, one of the best. Uh, we got 52nd rank. We, in, out of all the companies surveyed the Economic Times in India, we were ranked as 52nd best company to work for in India. We have been in Deloitte and Touche fast 50 people for the past uh, five years. And so we are uh, now, after that focus, we got into a slight amount of success. But our entrepreneurial reach does not stop. So 2009 on, uh, I went to Kellogg to do a, a part-time MBA. And after my MBA, I started a solar company now. Uh, we started investing in a music company, it's not our company. We invested in a music distribution company way back in 2009. Then we invested in a couple of solar companies, which I am running today. One of the companies, uh, Pratipna is... Uh, one of the directors, Sira Madhubai, is on Aspiration, and that's how I knew Sira. And today we are also uh, into hospitality. We opened a small restaurant, which is not only successful. So it looks like history repeats itself. So now we have, the good news is earlier we did not have any profitable company. Today we have one profitable company, which is feeding into all these non profitable companies. We started a, a couple of software product startups. In fact, one of the startups is uh, uh, one of the startups is a Microsoft uh, award winner. One of the cool, I don't know if you know partners, cool five or something like that. So we are part of that and all of that. But then, not revenue uh, making and profit making. All these awards. I mean, Aspiration Energy is an award winner from UNDP, from uh, Ministry of Human Rights Energy, from CIA. We are award winning company, but not a profit making company yet. Right? At the end of the day, all the awards are the dog. We only want profits. So we are in the journey to recreate what successfully created with Aspire Systems in other ways. That's a polished way of thinking. <laughs> That's the journey. That's a background and so I'd be happy to answer those So, uh, so, I just think, so what would you say, how important would you say is finding the right co-founder or the partner? The most important. 
it's like a, I, I, I think uh, getting a partner is more important than getting a wife. Really think so. Not, uh, uh, not saying the wife can ruin your life. It's different. <laughs> but uh, getting, a, getting a partner is very important. But having said that, I wouldn't say that co-founder is the only way to get that partner. I am mean, not fully subscribing to that view. Because right in Aspiration Energy, if you really look at it, there are a couple of people in Aspiration Energy, I hope that Aspiration Energy will become successful, who in their own right are like co-founders. Uh, Manoharan is one person, Bangan is one person. Both of them are not co-founders, they are not partners, they are not stakeholders. So, uh, at the end of the day, you have to have a team. Now, what do you do to the team? Is it stake? Is it salary? Is it opportunity? Is it uh, uh, you know recognition? Or is it friendship? What you offer to get the team member can vary. But you need to have a team. Without the team, you cannot succeed. So just the co-founder itself is not enough. Why? I keep, I keep saying, uh, Gauri and I are great partners because he brings all the goods, I, I think all the bad, and it's a great partnership. That's what I say. The compliment is are extremely well. I say that. But, uh, I don't know, I, uh, the way I say it is, I don't know if you have heard of the saying, it says, Ni arasi kundwa, na umi kundwa, ra, it is saying, kalandu umi umi sapulla. That's the way it works with Gauri and I. But then, at the, why Gauri's role is very important. I really think the other team members are also equally important. Some people who actually chartered the success story for Aspire are still continuing. They are, uh, they are senior people within Aspire and they are very important. So some people it was just salary plus recognition and growth along with the company. The thrill of growing the company without the risk was there. So I, while I give credit to Gauri, I am not denying that, but then that's not the only team. You need to form a team, but what you give back to the team depends on which person you want. It is case to case. Some people you cannot get without giving stake. But at the same time, uh, you have to be careful about who you are giving stake to. The founded Aspire, this is a very, very valuable lesson to be learned in that. The founded Aspire with GB International holding 40%, and six other people holding 10% each. That's how we started. So four, 40 plus 60. So eight people co-founding team. That's how we started. But Gauri and I were giving our tan man dhan. And that's exactly what we were giving. Whatever I have, I give. It's not like I have too much. But I had, we had given whatever we had. Gauri and I were giving our all into the company. The remaining six were in cushy jobs, they were supposed to commit and join. They never joined. One of the one of the people who was managing our operations in Bolivia, just to give you a perspective, in 98, 99, when we wanted a, not 99, 2003, 2004, when we wanted a development head in here, we wanted him here. He was saying, you pay me American salaries, you give me my son, two sons, he had three, daughter, three daughters. All the three daughters had mission in American International School, which is, Three daughters, you pay American parents school, you pay which uh, <laughs> as much as a US family for one person. So you give give me that and give me a place, a house with a swimming pool, you give me a house with a swimming pool. This is what he was demanding. Now, he was supposed to be a co-founder. Now we had taken the grind and all of that. So you should be careful about it. Finally, what it ended up with was somebody else who joined us in 99. We started in 96. Somebody else who joined in 99, he's a, still a partner. He has given his year. everything from 99 to here, he is still a 10% partner in the company. All the six people shed away. In fact, one of those six people works as an employee for Aspire today. One of the six co-founders, he went away because he did not want to risk his uh, whatever he wanted uh, to risk. So he went to work for a Dubai company. Then uh, after we became successful, he came back and joined as an employee. He is still an employee of company. He is heading our talent nurturing as a matter of fact today. So, you have to be careful about whom you are giving your stake to. But, who stops you from doing the mistakes that we did and uh, correcting it? Nobody can stop you. But then, this is a lesson from what I have gone through. You should not give stake also for everything. It appears very attractive to give stake instead of paying salary. You know, it, it looks, but then, it's very costly because 
for us to once you become successful to recover stake is like a pulling teeth from tiger i can tell you from its back i can tell you that's how it is it's very 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 difficult because the moment they have stake now the same person um, who we are trying to hire american trade school he got a great pay off the many people we could buy off uh, stake by stake we got off but this person kept on holding he had to hold our person stake even last year we paid so much of money from us to get the to hold our person stake for nothing he was there in the right place at the right time that's all about it that's so you should be very careful because believe me you will be successful once you become successful that's what you are looking for once you become successful stake becomes very expensive another question I hope yeah. I answered it with a long answer. Yeah. No, I have a question. Now, when you started off uh, on your entrepreneurial journey from college, right? You said the main reason that you looked at it was making one third doing a part-time job as what working as a part-time job. Yeah. So, was your motivation only the money, or was it something else more than that? It was. See, we started off with pocket for pocket money, but then the sheer. Uh, making money out of business is a uh, is the kick is a kick kick it just cannot be explained or shared the moment you actually make revenue and actually see checks coming into the bank and you are able to spend you are able to write the checks and you are able to have some money left in the bank it's a giddy feeling it's just you cannot you cannot explain it you cannot describe it it's not it's not like drawing salary it's much more than that. Because it's like you created something that is perceived to be valuable by a customer. He bought it. He not only bought it, he paid money for it, and you could spend less and make a money, make some margin out of it. It can be ten rupees, doesn't matter. But then that's a kitty feeling. So that kitty feeling feeds itself. It's a so if you if you want to go the spiritual way, I think it is very opposed to the entrepreneurial way. So it's like a, a complete Maya. You get. Yourself and immerse into complete total Maya. You cannot escape from it. So it's that that even now we are chasing that. Uh, you know, we are going to take our company. Now we want to be a thousand crore company. That uh, kick is still good. Yeah, the fire in the belly hasn't gone. Yeah, the trunk. <laughs> More a trunk actually. They are addicted to it and they don't want to lose it. But then when you started off. It would have had a lot of challenges when you started as well. Like you said, you were one crore in the hole for ten amount. So how did you get? One crore in today's value, two hundred thousand dollars. I don't know how okay. it was at that time. So how how would you have? I mean, how did you get over that? How did you overcome the challenge? How did you make your company back on track? We we never stopped trying, and uh, we were. Uh, it's not the one formula. So uh, I mean. Uh, I I am personally a big time ideas person. So uh, I would come here and say uh, I would come up with five hundred ideas. Out of which you cannot execute even fifty. You cannot even execute five hundred. You cannot. You don't have value to execute five hundred ideas. So fifty. If you are able to execute fifty, you will be very lucky. You can execute only five, and you keep on executing that five. One out of a twenty lot will click. So by the time you go through it, you have uh, tried so many. So you uh, many of them you have struck them off at the board level itself, black board level, or uh, some of them you have taken a baby step and uh, failed. So you keep on persevering. In my the only thing that I have brought to the table, I really think, is perseverance and keep trying. Experiment, experiment. I think I experimented. Find the one that actually clicks. Yeah, we don't know which one it is. And it was, and uh, the ideas, uh, the idea that actually clicked the spear came from a, com a, a forum like this. I would say this is unconnected forum. I went to a retail uh, retail workshop, and that's where I picked up the idea that actually turned around us. It was a retail forum. Nothing connected to IT. Nothing connected to anything at all. That that idea was living in my mind, living in my mind, and that actually turned around as per reality. So, so, so keep your ears and eyes open. So when the idea will actually get. 
here, I don't know, with me as resource person, how much ideas can you get? <laughs> you can, you can get an idea of what all you should not do. Don't start with eight partners. <laughs> don't do too many businesses. Don't uh, take distributorship of Turkmax. <laughs> to give an example. <laughs> so how, what made you from, you know, you had already grown Aspire in 2009 when you went to Kellogg. It was grown into a substantial company. What made you shift from IT to a completely different thing like solar? What drove you to that? Because you even became a solar right. TV so expert. Now, right? There is one fundamental flaw in your question, which is that you have said from IT. That means I am good at something, IT. No, <laughs> that's the reality. So you are not good at anything, so you can do anything. That's the thing. So the moment you know that it's not, don't box yourself into something. You cannot box yourself to solar today. If I box myself to solar today, I think I'll be gone. I cannot box myself. So today, to give you a perspective of my defocus, uh, which is a uh, concern, uh, but I enjoy it, is uh, solar hospitality business. I won't get too much involved with that. I am into acupuncture. I am into acupuncture. I am into theater. I just passed out uh, oh, okay. uh, the of the theater and trying to just last <coughs> week I started on learning uh, food, the food, you know, this uh, Devaratham. Last week I joined the class that uh, teaches Devaratham and Tari Kutu. In the Manu Kutu, I should dance at Lara Vinna. In the Manu Kutu, I should dance at Lara Vinna. So, I think, I think uh, keeping your mind completely open helps. And number one, number two, we are entrepreneurs. We start with the circulation library. So, what made us diverse from circulation library into gifts? What made us diverse from desktop publishing into IT? What made us diverse from IT into outsourced product development? Same thing has driven us. There's not, while there is some coherence that can be attached from DTP to IT to opinion or other, but it's all entrepreneurial. The same skill sets that can be transferred to world. Yeah. yeah, from a startup perspective, I think the same skills can be transferred. At least you can safely assume so. It doesn't seem to be so. It is a very fast becoming successful. But so, my question is now, what would be your advice in terms of people who want to start companies? So, there are a lot of people here who would like to start their own company. So, how, what advice would you give them? So, at first, start young. Don't think you can do everything yourself. But then it doesn't mean that you should give a stake and find go for it. Definitely not. That could, be, that could be several other arrangements. I can give you several other arrangements that worked for us in the past in terms of getting these co-founders, not shareholders, but people who have founded these things to, to, uh, along with us. So the things that, uh, that have attracted people range from people who are, uh, who are just starting, they have been given a complete head or ownership of uh, a person who has just completed ACS, uh, not even completed, I mean inter or whatever, ACS inter, was given the complete uh, accounting pre closure. Now that, that person enjoyed it. That person said, I I think this kind of responsibility I will not get as well. Now that was a big excitement for her. And so she is with us even now, that putting one of the longest outstanding employees. The person, so from res high responsibility to recognitions. Now, Somebody who you are visually recognizing every time you are in a forum. It's not a planned event, you are actually recognizing. So I have a couple of people who are working for us in the United States. They are uh, retired people and they have so much skills. Retired people. Now those are great resources. Those people go in and out. They have created two crores, two and a half crores worth of business, starting from getting the business to running the business to completing the business they have done for me right now. Now, what we are paying him is big tons, 10,000 rupees a month, just to give you a question of that, that's all. Now, a person with 35 years of experience with engineering, they are paying that kind of money. So, it's a recognition, retired people, if you are able to uh, you know, connect, with them. connect with them, and uh, or uh, sometimes it is take, sometimes it is take, Some, sometimes it is uh, offer of your skill sets, or uh, sometimes it is marriage. <laughs> Some people give their life for what? So it could be anything, but there has to be an equitable compensation. So I really think, don't do it alone, get somebody else to do it, but you have to be careful about how you're going to compensate for it. It could be variable pay based on success, whatever. It could be a return like that. Then 
Uh, I, I mean, it is coming from devil's mouth itself, but be focused. <laughs> be who I am, very difficult to say. But then, if you're not focused, it's very difficult. You, if we did not create aspire success, I wouldn't have been able to assert this be focused, seriously speaking. So, and that was created because, because of focus. Now, today, I am a different entrepreneur compared to what I was earlier. So, today's entrepreneurship cannot be compared to that time's entrepreneurship. So, if you are young and you are trying to start, and fourth, very important is, lot of times, you don't attach an economic value for your time. It's very important you attach it and know that you are investing. Just to take an example, if you are in a full-time job and working half, four hours a day on a startup, full-time job pays you 10,000 rupees a month. Just taking some numbers, 20,000 rupees a month. Now you value that four hours would pay you 10,000 rupees a month. That's an investment that you're making. Consider that to be an investment. The reason for that is very simple. If you don't value it, if somebody is ready to offer to do the job for 5,000 rupees, you wouldn't pay. Because you are not valuing your time as 10,000. If you value your time as 10,000 rupees, you know that you are investing that. You will say that, okay, somebody is willing to do the same 4 hours of work for 5,000 rupees cheaper. But if you don't take that value, you would think that you want to do it. This is a big mistake that I have done when I was running my DTP unit. A big mistake I have done even today in some of the things that I do. And I am slowly getting away from it, but it's very difficult to get away from it because it feels, we always feel cash out from hand looks like more expensive than hidden cost. That's look. I take an example. My father comes from Pondicherry. If I send a car from here all the way to Pondicherry and pick him up from there, it will cost me roughly 2,000 rupees to get that driver, send my car, fill petrol, and bring him back. He wouldn't climb on an AC bus saying it's 200 rupees, very expensive. But he wouldn't mind if I send him a car from here, which costs him 2,000 rupees. Now, you can understand the perceptions are very different. People have cars. The cars are much more expensive than if you take taxis. Actually speaking, but nobody knows it. Everybody will only look at running cost and take diesel cars versus petrol cars. Many a time, diesel cars are more expensive. But cash out feels like more expensive than the cash not down. So you should value your time for how much you are spending. And if you can substitute it cheaper than your job, you should do it. Even if it's cash out. So these are some of the advice that I would say. Difficult. All of them. Focus difficult. Uh, cash out difficult. Not having forms is very tempting. Because somebody is ready to come and uh, fix their time against future success. But then what is sustainability is the question. So those are some of the do you have any advice for entrepreneurs on how to build a team? Because one of the most important points that you have mentioned. I, uh, I, quote from, I quote from a good friend of mine called Shri Khan. Uh, he says it's physics, chemistry, maths. Now, uh, first is physics, which means does that person have time? And that person is in Timbuktu. I am in uh, Chennai. The time zones are not working. So physics is not good. That person knows how to do accounting and finance, and I know how to do technology, but there's no common platform on how we can communicate. Whatever he says, I don't understand. Whatever I say, he don't understand. And physics is not there. Physics means there should be a clear time in which you are able to work, place in which you are able to work, and ability to communicate and work together. That is physics. The second is chemistry. If physics is not there, you should not even choose anything. If physics is not there, forget that thing, no need. Second is chemistry. Chemistry is what bubbles, which means I I say at 10 o'clock, I call up and say, hey, I'm not able to make it, I'm not feeling well, that person believes, that person trusts you. And says, okay, fine, that doesn't matter. Now, that is chemistry. Now, chemistry is the minor adjustments. So it's all about you are feeling trust and faith and we can grow together as chemistry. And last is maths. The unfortunate truth in the world is people look at maths first and lose out on chemistry and physics. The first is physics. That's he or she possesses the skill sets that you need. And is there a common language in which you are able to
collaborate physics and chemistry are we finding happiness in being together and last is my thought process very easy and final thoughts on if you can do it all again would you do anything differently or would it all fall in place in the way there's a good way you crack the card and the notes to myself and he says uh, you know I hate this word called it could have been or it would have been. It can never be other than the way it was. So that's what he says. The end of your idea of your written book. Uh, I'm not quoting it one by ten, but this is the essence of what he he says. So it couldn't have been any other way than the way it was. But uh, uh, if I go back and read it, I think I would uh, look the same. Excellent. So throw the floor open to any questions for. I hope it was useful. Uh, small group. So. When you partner with someone, uh, there has to be